So now that we've seen the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we start to see how we could fine tune it with those ratios of A minus and HA. How can we put all this information together? So let's say you wanted to make one liter of a buffer solution and you wanted the pH of that buffer to be somewhere around 4.3. And I gave you a, a set of chemicals that you could choose from. So you could do uh, HSO4 minus and its conjugate base, the sulfate ion. You could do acetic acid with the acetate ion, or you could do the bicarbonate ion and the carbonate ion buffer. Uh, and if I gave you the choice and I said, which one, which combination would you want to use? We have the Ka values and the pKa values there. So if our goal is to try and get a pH of about 4.3, the majority of your uh, buffer, the, what it's going to be based off of is that pKa value. So we want to pick an acid conjugate acid, sorry, an acid conjugate base pair that's somewhere close to the pH that we're going for. Since we're aiming for a pH of 4.3, I'm going to choose that acetic acid acetate ion combination because the pKa is closest to the pH that we're aiming for. And then we can just fine tune that buffer with our ratios of A minus to HA to get it to be right at the pH that we want it to be. So what would that A minus to HA concentration ratio have to be? Well, we wanted the pH to be 4.3, and the pKa of our acetic acid was 4.74. So if we plug in those two numbers, and then we look at what's left of that equation, we have the log of a minus over HA. So let's start substituting in what we know. So if we subtract 4.74 from both sides, you'll get negative 0.44 on the left and just the log there on the right hand side. If we rearrange that log equation, what that would mean is 10 to the negative 0.44 power would be equal to A minus over HA. 10 to the negative 0.44 is the same thing as roughly 0.36. So what that means is the A minus concentration needs to be 0.36 that of the HA concentration. So you could have molarities of 0.36 for your A minus and 1 for your HA, or 0.72 molar and 2 for your HA. Uh, some some fraction there that would reduce down to 0.36. One important thing to note when you're using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, when you divide the ratios of those molarities of the base to the acid, the volumes cancel. It's kind of hard to picture when you're looking at the equation on paper, but if you think about the actual chemical itself, both the conjugate acid and its base are pair. They're both in the same flask. They're both in there simultaneously. So they have the same volume. So if you go to plug that into your equation of A minus's molarity over HA's molarity, the volumes of the A minus and the HA are the same. So this means two things. You could just plug in moles instead of molarities into the uh, Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and diluting a buffer doesn't change its pH because you're changing the volume of both the weak acid and its conjugate base simultaneously, and those volumes would just end up canceling out. So let's see how a buffer maintains the pH of a solution. So let's say we added 5 milliliters of 2 molar hydrochloric acid to a liter's worth of pure water at 25 degrees. Well, the pH of pure water is just 7. But after adding the acid, then what? Well, remember that your molarity of your acid is 2 molar prior to mixing it with that 1 liter of water. So we have to do our dilution equation there. 
and say, what happens to the molarity of that acid after we dump it into the liter of water? So the acid by itself has a volume of 5 milliliters or 0 0.005 liters, but after we mix that with a liter's worth of water, we have a new total volume of 1.005 liters, and we could find our new molarity. If the new molarity is calculated to be 0 0.00995 molar, and HCl is a strong acid at 100% dissociates, that means that the H3O plus concentration is also 0 0.00995 molar, and we could take the negative log of that number to get the pH. So just by adding a splash of acid, that's not a lot, right? Five milliliters of acid being added to a liter's worth of water, and the pH drops significantly from seven all the way down to two. But what if we added the same amount of acid instead of adding it to one liter of pure water? What if we added it to one liter of a buffer? So now we're adding it to an acetic acid acetate buffer. And just for reference, I'm going to use the exact same buffer that we used in a previous problem of this presentation, where we had 0.7 molar acetic acid and 0.6 molar acetate ion. What if we added 5 milliliters of acid to that? What's the pH? Well, the first question you're going to ask yourself is what part of the buffer, the acetic acid or the acetate ion, is going to react with the hydrochloric acid. Well, the hydrochloric acid isn't going to react with the acetic acid. We need our base to react with the acid that's being added in there. So it's the acetate ion that's going to react with our hydrochloric acid. So there's our reaction there, the H3O plus from our strong acid reacting with the acetate ion part of our buffer to make water and some acetic acid. Well, when we add that hydrochloric acid to our acetic acid acetate buffer solution, we have to keep in mind all the chemicals dilute one another. So we have to do an M1, V1, M2, V2 for all three chemicals, the H3O+, the acetate ion, and the acetic acid. So the H3O plus started as 2 molar. We put in 5 milliliters, 0 0.005 liters into our one liters worth of buffer. So our new volume for the buffer with the acid in there is 1.005 liters. We have our new molarity. We're going to do the same thing with the acetate ion that started as 0.6. But after we add that little splash of acid in there, it brings the molarity down to 0.597. And our acetic acid started with a molarity of 0.7. After we add that splash of acid, it brings down the molarity just a hair to 0.697. Well, now we could plug those molarities into an ice table. There's the equation that we wrote of the strong acid reacting with the acetate ion from our buffer. We knew the molarities of all three of those chemicals. So now what? Well, now you have to ask yourself which chemical is the limiting reactant. There's far less H3O plus there than anything else, so that means it's going to get entirely used up. So we're going to lose 0 0.0095 molar H3O plus from the left-hand side and gain that much on the right-hand side. So now we don't have any H3O plus left. Our acetate ion comes down to about 0.587, and our acetic acid goes up to a molarity of 0.707. But we have to reestablish equilibrium. What's going to happen next is similar to those reactions at the equivalence point. Because you don't have any H3O plus left over, the reaction is going to try to reestablish equilibrium, and the products can react with one another to make more H3O plus and acetate ion. So we, we're having this reestablishment of equilibrium. So, kind of like we did in the previous problems, we know the molarity of the acetic acid and the acetate ions from the previous slide. 
we know that the acetic acid is going to come down by some amount and the acetate and the hydronium are going to go up by some amount x. We know the Ka, it told us on a previous slide, the Ka value was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. We could plug that in, solve for our H3O plus, take the negative log of that number, and get our pH. That pH there is almost the same pH as the buffer itself. If you go back and look at when we found the pH of the buffer itself on slide number six, just the buffer without any acid being added to it had a pH of 4.68, 4.664. It's, it's essentially the same pH. It's essentially no effect on the pH because the acetate ion was able to react with the additional acid. That's why on the buffer part of a titration curve, it's an essentially horizontal line uh, because any of that base that you might be adding during a titration or acid that you're adding is, being, uh, is reacting with that buffer that's happening inside that solution. So we did learn about the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Could we have used the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to figure out the pH instead? Yeah, you knew the equilibrium molarities from the reaction between the acid and the acetate ion, and you knew the Ka value, so you could have used your Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and you get the exact same answer as you did before. You just don't need that secondary ice table to be able to figure it out.